Hey friends, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my pretty minimal uh, YouTube setup for 2023. I have just one camera, one light and a microphone which is leaded there. But it makes this sort of image look pretty good, I think. From the videos I've made so far, I've got some really lovely compliments about the production quality. Thank you very much, by the way. Um, so I thought I'd just show you around the sort of setup I'm using and hopefully it'll be useful for you if you're on a similar YouTube kind of journey. So at the heart of the setup is obviously the camera. Um, so I'm using the Sony ZV-E10, which is one of Sony's entry-level DSLR mirrorless cameras. It's more than enough for what I need and I think what most people would really need a camera for. The image quality is just fantastic and it can shoot up to 4k 30 frames uh, which is actually down sampled from 6k so the image is super super sharp and if anything it's a little bit too sharp like you can see a lot of detail in my face in 4k um you know, if i'm trying to film when i'm tired in 4k i will look like a goblin but it's very nice to have that sort of quality it also supports 1080p at 125 frames for some really nice slow-mo b-rolly goodness it uses a large 24.3 megapixel aps-c type sensor uh, which essentially means it lets in loads of light and it looks really good and the autofocus is crazy good like if I try and get out of focus, I just can't do it. Like, it tracks my face like mad. It has this like eye detection on it and you can see that I just am tracked all over the place. Sorry about this wobble, but it gives you an idea. <laughs> it also has this product showcase mode, which means that anything I put in front of the camera, it will just instantly snap to focus on it, which is sick for like product reviews. It also works as a webcam, which is sick, as you can stream or uh, attend Zoom calls in beautiful quality. I never thought I'd actually use this as a webcam, but I've streamed a couple times now, and it's so nice being able to do that with a camera of good quality. But I do think I'd feel a little bit too smug going into Zoom calls with it, if I'm honest. <laughs> it also uses Sony's E-mount, which to my knowledge is the broadest, most widely used mounting system for lenses and stuff. So you'll just have a ton of different options when it comes to lenses. And talking of lenses, that's really what makes this camera come to life and gives it its look. So the one I'm using is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4, and it's essentially what's giving this shot a nice blurry background back there. But yeah, the clarity on this lens is just stunning. It creates such a clean, detailed look, and I'm a massive, massive fan. Also, because it's f1.4, it lets in a ton of light, which means you can film in really dark locations, but it also means you can really dial in the depth of field, which essentially is like the blurry background. So to show you the difference, it's currently a 1.8, and if we dial this up, you can see the background becomes a lot clearer, and now I'm not standing out nearly as much, but we can lower this right down even to 1.4. It's too bright, but it gives a really blurry background. So I just sort of take it up to about 1.8 and adjust the ISO a little bit. And for me, that's just about enough to add that little bit of separation. And for me, the 16 millimeter focal length is perfect too. So all that essentially means is like how wide the shot is. And 16 millimeter is very wide in the grand scheme of things. So I'm only at arm's length away from the camera here, uh, which means that even if I'm in a really tight spot, like I film up in my little office a lot, and even though the camera's really close to me, I can still fit everything in, get a bit of the background, and it makes working in small spaces just ideal. And I use this lens for everything, like product shots, uh, B-roll, literally everything. Which brings us on to microphones. So if you've watched any how-to YouTube videos, you'll know that audio quality is very, very important. People will sit through bad picture quality, but not through bad audio quality. But luckily, this is really easy to get around. Uh, I use just a lav mic and a secret weapon. The lav mic I'm using here is the PowerDevice lav mic. And I literally just connect it up to my camera and then hook it onto my collar there. And it works fine, which means it is sometimes in shot, but you can tape it to your chest if you want to get it out of shot. But I'm not going to show you my chest today. And the finger sounds pretty good as it is, um, but here's where my secret weapon comes in. So this is how the mic sounds before my secret weapon. Kind of roomy, uh, it's okay, but it's not particularly good. But we can run this audio through a free website called Adobe Podcast, and it takes our audio from sounding like this to sounding like 
this, which is much cleaner, clearer, dare I say smooth and seductive. Now I'll leave that up to you to decide. And what's great about this is that we don't need to know anything about audio editing. It just sounds super clean, straight out of the box. It essentially uses AI to cut out a load of room noise and stuff that isn't very nice and enhances the rest of it. And it's great for me because I'm just filming in my living room. Like I'm not in a studio with like sound insulation and any fancy treatment. But regardless of that, I can still get a pretty professional sound. But it's worth saying that the better audio that goes in, the better audio that will come out of that program, but more professional microphones phones do cost a lot of money and you often have to like you know boom them up out of shot and set up something else or you'll need like an interface or you'll need to connect to like a condenser microphone and have it in shot and to get the best sound your room often needs treating as well so it's all just like a massive faff when I think this is so easy and clean to set up and it gets this kind of sound which at the moment I am totally, totally happy with. So another massive part of getting a shot looking good is lighting. This can really make or break videos. I'll give an example here of poor lighting with the same camera setup. Oh brother, this guy stinks! So I'm currently using the Aperture Amaran 60X, which is a tiny little light, which is perfect for fitting in those small spaces, but it still produces a ton of really nice soft light and it's more than enough for most people doing this kind of talking head stuff. So the minute it's only on 18% intensity. So if we turn that up to like 100, it's just like looking into the sun, like. <laughs> so yeah, it's obviously more than enough than I need. I'll take it back down to 18. You can either control it from the back with a dial or you can use this really good app uh, to adjust all the settings. And I really like using it this way so I can just dial in the settings while looking at the screen. And you can get so specific with exactly how the light's working. You can literally dial up the light by 0.1% at a time. So you can really well dial in the kind of light you want. And you can also adjust the light temperature using this so we can go a lot cooler or a lot warmer depending on what kind of what kind of shot you want a lot of people go for 5600k which is daylight temperature but i like to warm it up just ever so slightly go to about 5200 like just just takes the edge off a bit but we also need to talk about the diffuser that we've got on this light so i'm using the godox sc50d uh, which as far as diffusers go is pretty small it's 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters so it diffuses the light in a really soft way which not only makes the shot look really nice but also covers a massive area so it wraps around my face really well um, and also sends a load of light onto the backdrop so rather than having to have like two soft boxes facing me either side and some other stuff in the back i just find relying on a little bit of natural light from the window and having this in front just makes a nice balance of light, you know? And another positive is it just kind of looks nice. Like I often just have it left up in my room and it almost looks like a, a cool lamp, do you know what I mean? Whereas traditional soft boxes can look a bit boxy and a bit industrial looking, you know? And in terms of other little bits and pieces I use, uh, the tripod is a Gikoto tripod. Uh, not much to say about this, really really high quality and really nice goes really high goes really low can shoot vertical videos and face down but it is a little bit over the top a bit unnecessary any kind of tripod will be fine and just have a really cheap one before but putting an expensive camera on top of a super wobbly cheap plastic thing gave me some serious anxiety. So <laughs> SD cards, I'm just using this SanDisk one, uh, pretty standard, works fine. I'm using a one terabyte SanDisk SSD for all the editing as well. Um, for the love of God, do not edit on a regular hard drive. I have haunted memories of trying to edit a three hour long course with one of those and I've never recovered from it. It's haunted me ever since. And on the note of editing, I'm currently using a 2021 MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro processor. More than enough power than what I need it for, but I do plan on keeping this MacBook for at least like eight or 10 years. So I feel like investing in a good one makes sense. In terms of editing, I'm currently using Final Cut Pro, um, but I think if I was starting again from scratch, I would lean more towards DaVinci Resolve, I think. But I do really like Final Cut, it's really easy to use. I just really like the workflow on there. Now it goes without saying that a lot of this stuff is very expensive uh, and it's easy to look at this and go, oh man, I need all this stuff 
to start making videos and getting on YouTube and that, but you really don't. For example, just using your phone's rear-facing camera and sitting next to a big open window can equally get you a really good looking shot. The cameras on any phone made over the last five years are gonna be really, really good. Just make sure to face a good bit of light, turn off the sort of like ceiling lights in your room and take the audio from your phone and put it through that Adobe podcast website I told you about, which will make your audio sound like this. And you've got a really good looking shot in my opinion. And I think especially if you're just trialing out YouTube to see how it goes, this is by far the best setup to figure out if you like doing it, you know? And if we're talking about minimal setups, this has got to be the king of minimal setups right here. Thank you so much for chilling out with me here today. I really hope this was useful for you. If you're starting a YouTube channel this year, please feel free to link your channels down below. I'll be like subscribing and watching just about anyone that posts their channel in there. I always like connecting up with other people that are doing YouTube-y stuff. I hope you have a really good rest of your day and I'll catch you really soon. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye, 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 bye.